So we're going to get into our rate that advice column. And I want to know, of course, what y'all think about it. This is from my boy Nipsey Hustle. He has some great game for y'all, but there's some nuances we want to add to it on top of that and how you can apply it to yourself. So check this out. Nipsey, go ahead and drop them gems. When I drop Prince, y'all, top my school was hit me. He like, bro, you killing him. You did one thing wrong, though. I'm like, what? He like, you called it a mixtape. Like, you should have called it your album, bro. You tripped. I'm like, nah, because I didn't want to have a sales history. 50 Cent told me that, man. He like, you know, years ago, he like, hustle. He like, um, regardless of what they say, you in a good space because you never sold the album. So when you go back to negotiate your deal, you don't have a sales history. They're going to have to top your perspective sales, which, which what they think you might do. And you from the coast, you from LA, you got a big market. You know what I mean? They're going to compare you to artists like, you know what I mean, that have sold units on the West. And that's going to impact your negotiation. Whereas if you just, if you go indie and sell 20,000 units, they're going to base your, your deal off of that. And I'm like, damn, that's that's good information. I never I never thought of that. So I made sure that I didn't go to retail until I did my, my deal. You know what I'm saying? When I drop Prince, y'all. Mm. 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 Always gems on gems from Nipsey. You know, there's, there's going to be hella post-Nipsey, post-humus uh, Nipsey gems to come from years. And I think with this one right here, First of all, it has 50 Cent again. How many stories do we hear with 50 Cent yeah, dropping some kind on, of bro. game for people? And it worked. Yeah. And it works. And one, y'all need to hear this not only as an artist, but then this applies in different ways as an influencer, right? There's so many things to break down. So let's just start here. The advice itself, right? I don't know personally, right, how relevant that is today versus when Nipsey first got that advice, right? Yeah. And I'll say what I mean by that. One, Nipsey, I let's say, let's just say that was 2012 or something. I don't know. Right. Today, the industry is a little bit more aware and a little bit smarter. Because what he was talking about is a it's actually a bad way to judge shit. Right. And the industry it was it's notorious for sometimes being slower to judge things properly. Yeah. Right. So if you you drop these albums, right? What's the difference between an album and a project for the artists themselves? Like today? Maybe the amount of attention to detail around it. The amount of attention to detail. Yeah, how, how much they kind of emphasize it. Because it's kind of like burning to our brand as consumers. That album means like, oh, it's about to be some big shit coming. You know what exactly, yeah. exactly. It means it's something more serious. Yeah. But beyond that. Same thing. Same thing. Exactly same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Right now, of course, we can get into more details where it's like, oh, okay, there might be a bigger marketing budget. Da 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 da. But generally speaking, if you're an artist that has no resources or very little resources, and you're dropping all these mixtapes, nine times out of ten, when you drop this album and you aren't signed yet, you haven't gotten any additional investment, you're still just dropping the same project with maybe more attention to detail. You made it more serious. There's nothing else to truly judge it on. So that's a that's an unfair judgment to just say, oh, now that he called it album, I'm going to compare it to the rest of the world, right? Mm. However, the reality of the game kicks in and that just is what it is <laughs> and you got to rock with it. So it's important to understand these nuances because that same thing transitions to any of y'all who are influencers too right um like i remember talking with jo and he's cool with <laughs> and he was talking about how he wasn't on tiktok yet so this is probably like 2020 when we were talking and you know i was helping jo um advise him on just some of the stuff he was doing with tiktok and then he was talking about all his other friends who were trying to get on tiktok and he mentioned and he was like not trying to get on yet why because tiktok was paying influencers to get on tiktok yeah. right yeah and he didn't know what his numbers would look like when he got over there. So what was he doing? Holding out so he can get the biggest check possible based on his footprint in the rest of the internet. All right. My YouTube following is crazy. I've been spending all this time developing this. My Instagram page is going crazy. I spent all this time developing this. But if I go hop on this new platform, I have no idea what it's going to look like. So I'm not going to try to get any money after the fact. And plus, 
you now have that leverage. I'm on the platform already. So what can you say? But as long as I'm not on that platform yet, you can imagine and speculate what my numbers could do for you. So yeah. he was holding out and not getting over there until he broke bread with TikTok to get onto the platform, which TikTok was doing heavy when they were, you know, when we start hearing about TikTok crazy, yeah. a huge part of it was they were paying a lot of influencers to be on the platform. So that same thing is what I think about when I hear Nipsey say, yeah, don't call it an album, right? Because all it does is change the context that they can argue against. And that's what goes into the negotiations a lot of times. We know the reality is you shouldn't look at this artist who doesn't have X, Y, and Z resources and try to say his album should be judged with, I don't know, Dr. Dre's album or whoever was popping in the West, Kendrick's album, right, in, in the West Coast at that time. You should be saying, based on his resources, and he's performing this way, this is how we should judge him. But nah, from a negotiator standpoint, you're going to argue in your favor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Other albums in the region, they do X, Y, and Z. So here it is. This is all we can pay you based on the numbers. A big part of this advice is basically maintaining your leverage and understanding where leverage comes from on the other side of the table. Yeah, and semantics. And semantics. And semantics, bro. Like, semantics play a, a big part in it. Yes. It, I, I do think about, at least in the context of what, what he said, going back to it might be a little dated. Because I think today if an indie artist came into, into the situation and was like, hey, I sold 20,000 albums indie, that today would be impressive. Back yes. then, yeah, that would not that would not yeah, be impressive. Exactly. Right? So, That's why I started with that yeah, question. Yeah. yeah. So I do think, like, it, it could kind of flip there. But, yeah, the biggest thing I got out of it was, like, understanding semantics and the way People are going to perceive things based on like what you call it, right? Because and, and all it is is changing words, but this is a mixed site. Oh, okay, cool. The pressure has dropped a little bit. I'm judging it a little as harshly. Oh, you call it an album? Well, this is what I'm typically used to seeing happen around an album, whether number-wise, resource-wise, and everything else. And I didn't see these, so therefore I can say you did not have a successful album, right? Like you said, the argument would be, but I didn't have those resources. But yeah, semantics, bro. All of it goes back mm -hmm. to semantics. And who is who has enough leverage to play with the semantics the, the way they need to <laughs> and bind you to that shit. That's how I look at it. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. To be fair, Todd Moskovitz, the guy he mentioned, gave him the advice that he should have dropped the album, probably was coming from a standpoint of what he thought might have been Nipsey's best interest when he said that. Yeah. Based on the way Nipsey talked about him, right? He didn't give any kind of bad tonality like he might have been somebody who was trying to like play him, right? Yeah. So he's probably giving him good advice, but then you always have to understand the reference point of good advice, right? He's an industry person. He's, you know, in the game from a different perspective of the artist, yeah. right? So he might be thinking to build Nipsey up and had give him leverage for one thing, but 50 cents like, yo, eh. As the artist, right, and the entrepreneur type, you are like 50 Cent is himself, and you want to look at things this way, right? So it's always interesting to take note of who you're getting advice from and how they're choosing to give advice, because I'll recognize that as well. Like a lot of times when I'm giving somebody advice on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it's like, all right, so what kind of advice do you want? All right, there's different levels on it. Are you trying to play this game, this game, or that game? Once we understand what game you're trying to play, then I can cater advice based on my understanding to what that looks like, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, you're just trying to flip, make money short term. You're trying to own things in the long term. Do you have publishing leverage? Do you, like, you want to tour heavy? You want not want to tour at all? All those things matter. So, like, who you're talking to matters a lot. Um, and even when you're getting well-intended advice 
Yeah, you still got to think for yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At the end of that, there are no real right or wrong answer, right? Like you said, like mm-hmm. both of them could have been giving him advice from with the best of intentions. They just kind of pulled in different directions based on what those people went through. But like, I, I feel like I always feel like that's the biggest thing people need to understand in music is there are no right or wrong answers. There's always going to be things that happen that on paper don't make sense, but then it happens. And you know, people like to point the finger back and like, oh, you said this wasn't going to work that way or it should have worked this one. It's like, well, sometimes motherfuckers is wrong, bro. This, this is how this <laughs> shit go. You know what I'm saying? Because like, I think we yeah. said a couple episodes ago, but like most people in music, I don't really know too many people that speak in absolutes. Like most of us are speaking from, hey, this is what I experienced, right? Mm-hmm. Like this is what I went through. Yep. This has kind of been my path that I walked. And X, Y, Z things happen when I did A, B, C. You know what yep. I'm saying? Not saying that if you do A, B, C, X, Y, Z, what happened? But this happened for me. Yep. And so I think that's always important for people to like remember when just picking and choosing who the advice is coming from. Like, does the context of what they've been through match up with what you what you might realistically be going through? Right? Like you said, like if I'm taking the advice from an artist who has been in the label system all their life, and I'm not an artist in the label system, right? It might only be so much that applies to me versus an artist that is in the label system. I'd be like, yo, this motherfucker is spitting. You know what I'm saying? Like, this, this motherfucker genius. You outside of it might be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, like, the things mm-hmm. you're saying don't make sense to me. And even vice versa, right? Like, there are people who in the indie spectrum that might give advice that, like, label artists are like, nah, bro, like, that shit is not going to fly, like, within the operation that I'm in and what I'm yeah. kind of building in. So I do always think that's the biggest thing is, like, music is about, Combine taking all the information you can get and like piecing it together for what makes sense for you. Right? It's like a puzzle, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, this from you makes sense, the rest of it don't. This from you makes sense, the rest of it don't. But together, I got my answer. You know what I'm exactly. saying? I know what I need to do. Exactly. Hey, look, that's the tool for life, right there, man. <laughs> because your ship is your ship, and nobody's ship is going to look exactly the same. And I always say, people struggle with the fact that they got trained in a school system where there is a A, there is a B, yeah. or a C, or a D. And one of those is right. Yeah. All of them shits could be right in music. Yeah, exactly. Like all of them. It's all about you. Every single option can work. And look, maybe only one of those options works one time, but damn, it worked one time for yeah. somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they're winning. And it was right for them. That's the reality of how how you know this thing works. But it's frustrating when you're used to things having to be this absolute right uh, one answer, and then you hear four or five different things, and yeah. you're like, "Oh, this person must be wrong because this other person said that," or whatever reason, or this person's more experienced, or they have this title and accolades, and you'll be surprised at how many people who have the titles and accolades will be so wrong, at least in your situation. That's partially why the new crop. <laughs> yeah, always up. rises up yeah. right because they're doing what's modern the people who didn't want to get on streaming and social media because they hated that and they didn't have to do it that allowed more people to pop up and they were right for that time and the advice uh, which also um like reminds me first let's go ahead and rank this advice me i'm gonna say a 10 out of 10 mm. because of what how we interpreted it yeah okay I'm right sorry, damn, that might be the first the first 10 out of 10 <laughs> Yeah, I, but it's, to me, it's that important, though, right? Like, he had, because he had all the makings, right? You had two different people, yeah. both qualified, but there was better advice. Also, he was able to stand his ground, right? Got this advice. Nah, I'm not going to do that because I got this other insight, yeah. right? And was able to stick to that insight and recognize that's the best advice. So, it's not just what he said, but also how it's presented and, and recognizing everything at work. I think that's a perfect example of how artists need to be able to move to find success in the industry. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you look at it that way, <laughs> <laughs> I guess when you look at it that way, I give it like an eight. Give it an eight? It ain't, it ain't 10 out of 10 for me. Like right. said, cause only because of the situation. Like I said, the, the, the number breakdown, I think, wouldn't apply to today. I, I A part of me feels like if you came into a situation today with what he was talking about, it might be a bit more strength behind it than right. trying to give them the hype. That I agree with. Yeah, yeah, Again, yeah. I so. started with, with that plot today. <laughs> yeah. so, I'll, so I try to go for principles, not the details, because the details are flexible, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think the principle 100% applies. But yeah, now nah, today I am popping indie artists. So we're not saying, so yeah, let's clarify that yeah. w- why you said it was a 100% we are not saying don't call something an album. All right, or do call something out. Well, I would even say that. Don't call something an album until you feel like you have the resources to make it appear 
like a big moment. I, w- I would stand on that. Well, that, yeah, see, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's still the same advice. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, even then, you're yeah. still agreeing with yeah, the context yeah. of it, yeah. right? <laughs> but we're, yeah, we're saying the, the way you will be judged is likely not to be exactly the same, though, because yeah. people have more context and they don't expect any artist to do that. But, you know what? I'm going to still pull it back, though, and say because of the negotiation aspect of it, yeah, nah. <laughs> just for that alone. One, you want to make it appear that way. And two, the negotiation leverage, nah, I'm going to have to 10 off, ten out of 10 all the way around. Fuck how people see it in the, in the game they can and will. They will still play that game. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. They they will see you as a better op and not judge you harshly, but they will still play that game because they can. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, not everybody, because you have some people who are more fair, and that's probably when people, you know, you might get in agreement with. You're like, all right, this person makes more sense. But- if you let them, they will use that against you. Yeah, because too many, why not? Yeah, it's too many points to use against you, not to use something against you. You're, ne- you're never going to 100% get out of that. Yes. You could be, oh, you sold 100K, you toured 12 cities, oh, but you only got 20,000 followers on Instagram, man. We can't fuck with you. It's like, damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that, that's the way it goes, man. That's the way it goes. So keep that in mind, right? Um just put that like put that in your pocket, right? Like yeah. just to be aware of what the other person on the side of the table has to negotiate with, right? In terms of how they see you, not with their own leverage, but literally how they can manipulate your leverage. Which I was arguing with somebody the other day, and it was about like the law, right? Illich and versus social society. I think legal, like government, right? True law should be very objective and we should culturally shame people into the behaviors we want right <laughs> <laughs> but it shouldn't be legally <laughs> in action right yeah. and, you know it, it shame is like a loose word kind of being tongue in cheek but like, we should culture we know we know that culture generally speaking sets up a lot of the outcomes that happen all right yeah. whatever the law may be all right, a lot of times we try to make them go hand in hand, but now things are so different. All these diverse thoughts, so law can't follow it all. Law has to be objective, right? Culturally, we can push people to what we want to. And my whole point of that was, well, this guy I was talking to was like, well, nah, we should make the law like this. We can't make it objective like that, or you can't think of it that way. And I'm like, if you get a lawyer, they are going to tell you hey this can be interpreted to the worst case scenario mm-hmm. right and they are going to adjust the the, um, the messaging for the worst case scenario because even if you don't think it's going to occur all right your lawyer is going to say because this does allow for that to happen you need to eliminate that possibility yeah. well they not right yeah. a good lawyer will do that so when y'all are signing y'all contracts that's the type of stuff that they're they're looking for and you always have to be thinking about that, right? Yeah, we're in this good, you know, you have some people that you're just in a different type of agreement. The relationship might be there, but still, just generally speaking, you want to make sure you eliminate that. So that law legal conversation made me think about this, which also, you know, comes back around when we look at contracts and negotiations. It's like whenever you're looking at the, whenever you're looking at the details, it's like, it sounds crazy to say the extremes like, oh, you just being skeptical, da, 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 da. But then the situations that we hear about <laughs> all the time. They're extreme. They're extreme. <laughs> they're extreme you bro. didn't adjust for the extreme, <laughs> man. Yeah, the extreme is possible. Just because it's extreme doesn't mean it's impossible. Yeah. But I was thinking about this the other day, just with going back to that whole, you know, no right or wrong answers, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like you could have something and be like, this doesn't work 98% of the time. And I was like, damn, what about that 2%? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, what about that 2% that it does work for, bro? Mm-hmm. And that 2% comes along and there's nobody talking to them because 98% of the time, this shit don't make sense. I haven't had to think of an answer for you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Or like, talk to you, put it through a situation. So I always think about that, bro. Like, yeah, no matter how much something doesn't work, there's a small group of people that it will work for. It, and you should exactly. be prepared. Like, move as if you won't be that person, right? But in the back of your head, be prepared for if you do. It's like going viral, bro. Like, you should move every day like you won't go viral. But if, yeah. you, if you do go viral, you know what I'm saying, you better be ready to shift gears and move be quick. Ready you know to shift gears, 100%. Yeah, move fast. Yeah. 100%. You know, you don't expect to get in a fight. But if you do, 
Right? Better know how to swing back. Better know how to swing back. (laughs) 